For six years, primetime TV in China has featured the media phenomenon, the Supergirl. This Chinese version of the Western pop idol and X Factor franchises has been the top rated TV entertainment show in the country. It's a mega music competition combining reality TV, a talent contest, and phone in voting, and it's drawn as many as 400 million viewers. If the audience were a country, it would be the world's third most populous. Among the viewers, however, was the government in Beijing, and this September, it voted the show out of existence. In a directive issued by the Chinese Communist Party in September, broadcaster Hunan TV was told the 2011 season of Supergirl would be its last. In the eyes of the Chinese government, mass media can influence public opinion. So to the Chinese government, controlling what is going on on television and radio is uh, a paramount concern. This type of clampdown actually happens really on almost an annual basis. And what usually happens is you have a, a loosening of government restrictions on media and entertainment, and the newspapers push the envelope a little bit. And the entertainment programs become a little bit more scandalous. And then the government decides that this has gone far enough, uh, and they, they clamp down. The Chinese government has issued a directive saying that they should focus their efforts on producing contents that have educational value or that can help people become more patriotic, love the country, love the government, and love the party. What the government is concerned is that a lot of the entertainment programs on television these days have nothing to do with educating people to love the country. There's another dating show that's being popular on Jiangsu um, satellite TV. The English title is If You Are The One. The government was concerned about the kind of message being conveyed by that show. And whether this is not living up to the standard of the so-called spiritual civilization that the government wanted to, um, to promote. But it isn't the spiritual civilization of just China's massive TV audiences that the government is concerned about. The Communist Party has also had its eye on the country's growing numbers of internet users. More than 500 million Chinese are online, and most of them are on China's microblogging website, Sina Weibo, which dwarfs Twitter in the number of its users. The site claims that the number of people on Sina Weibo has jumped 150% over the last year. And it's having an impact on the flow of information in China. There was a high-speed rail crash on July 23rd. More than 190 injured after four coaches of a bullet train fell off a bridge. Weibo was the source of a lot of criticism of the government and criticism of China's high-speed rail system. If there was one incident which focused the government's fears about Weibo, it was probably this, because the citizens using Weibo were criticizing the government in unprecedented quantities. Another event was this PX chemical plant project in the northeastern city of Dalian. The citizens got the information that the chemical the plant is producing is really toxic. So they also organized um, demonstration in public space through microblogging through the internet. And eventually the municipal government had to bow to the pressure of this and the factory decided to end their production. Restrictions on the internet aren't new in China. Most Chinese web users have never seen that famous image from the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests, a demonstrator facing off with an army tank. Tibet is another topic that's off-limits online. And with each new government media campaign, the Great Firewall of China has grown. Facebook is banned, and this past month, 39 Chinese internet firms promised the government they would conscientiously safeguard the broadcasting of positive messages online. If you don't toe the line uh, in China and you're involved in media communications, you will get into big trouble or you will get shut down. This is the way the media is controlled in China and the extremely fast uptake of, of microblogging of Weibo has posed a new challenge to the authorities' control of speech on the internet. There are several very prominent uh, bloggers in China uh, who is very influential 
Han Han has a large face of followers in China, and、uh, he is not shy in criticizing the government. I also know there's a blogger called Wei Se. She's a Tibetan、uh, woman, and、uh, she writes quite a lot on the issue of Tibet. We wrote to the Chinese Ministry of Culture asking for comment. We didn't hear back, but their website says the recent regulations on internet content are an attempt to strengthen guidance and administration of social internet services and instant communication tools, and regulate the orderly dissemination of information. But tech-savvy Chinese web surfers have made it harder for the government to completely control the flow of information online. I know a group of hardcore internet users who do really try to circumvent the firewall. They have the determination and the means to do it. Last year, I did manage to interview quite a lot of internet users from Hong Kong, and they told me their stories about how to circumvent the firewall. As long as you have the basic know-how, how to install an application on your PC, and then log on to the site. And、you will be able to to bypass the firewall and see the the sites that are blocked. The government is not able to fully control what kind of information the public can have access to. People might just find different ways, or maybe even using a different kind of language. Because on the Chinese internet, there are also all kinds of spoofs, parodies, and euphemism, all kinds of ways to circumvent the filtering and, and the censoring. For web surfers in China, working around the Great Firewall is an option. But the billion-plus Chinese who are not online are still seeing only what the government in Beijing wants them to see. That is the reality of what is on show in the Chinese media.